Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. These days, a popular theme among the memes is, don't be a sheep. Sheep, then, are the metaphorical or the iconic animal that blindly follows like a dumb beast, without thinking, without discernment, without wisdom. Sheep follow leaders uncritically, doing what they're told, playing along to get along. They blindly follow, even if it leads to their harm, their judgment, their destruction, and death. Sheep comply with mandates they don't agree to, follow rules that make no sense, inflict self-harm, and are self-owned by blind obedience. Or so the memes go. These memes suggest that you shouldn't be a sheep. (laughs) But that's impossible. Jesus calls his people the sheep of his pasture. His prophet says that we are all like sheep who have gone astray each going after his own way. His apostle calls the Holy Christian Church the flock of God, shepherded by the pastor whom the chief shepherd, Jesus, has given you. You can't escape being a sheep. Therefore, you can't live without a shepherd. So the question is not whether you are a sheep or whether you will follow a shepherd. That's going to happen. The question is, which shepherd? To whom you will submit. There is, of course, the thief who comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. There is also the hireling who cares nothing for the sheep and flees at the first sign of danger, allowing the sheep to be consumed by the wolf. And elsewhere, Jesus tells us that there are wolves in sheep's clothing who secretly weasel their way into the flock to manipulate, coerce, and redirect the sheep away from their shepherd, only then, again, to devour them. You can't transcend your sheepishness. (laughs) You can't go it alone, in other words. That was and is never good. You are given to be a part of a fold. You are given to be together with others. One sheep who is left alone will ultimately be a dead sheep. It's hardwired into the nature of the sheep to seek out a fold. Like attracts like, even if they are all alike in their ignorance and stupidity. A sheepfold without a shepherd then wanders off together into danger, foreign territory, and ignorance. So being together alone isn't enough. You are sheep who need a shepherd. You will follow someone. You will listen to someone. But not just any shepherd will do. It would be best if you had a good shepherd. The good shepherd knows his own, and his own know him. They hear his voice, and they follow him. The good one knows every weakness of his precious lambs and protects them. He is no hireling, but was and is and always will be their shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd sees the wolf coming and allows himself to be devoured. Thereby, he reveals the wolf for who he is. He reveals the poison charms of the world. He breaks the entrancing spell of the wolf's eyes. And his blood pours out 
to wash his lambs clean and white. By his death, he overcomes death and brings life to his flock. That's how you can distinguish between a bad shepherd and a good shepherd. A shepherd is known by what he does. He is known also by his voice. Jesus, your good shepherd, saves you from your rebellious wandering, returning you from the path of death and overcoming the devourer of the sheep. But there's also another diagnostic by which you can discover who is the good shepherd. You can tell him from a bad shepherd, Jesus the good shepherd, by where the shepherd leads you. Bad shepherds don't lead you to green pastures and still waters. Instead, they fence you in, they huddle you together, they feed you a steady gruel of or steady diet of gruel and muddy water. They keep you under their all-seeing eye, treating you like a commodity to be counted and fleeced. These bad shepherds command, demand, and require subservience. For them, it's all law, requirement, obedience. There is no life in them. Their words are dull, dark. There is no joy. There is no delight. And there's no beauty. So Jesus, your good shepherd, has come to lead you out of their pen, that you may live, and that you may live more abundantly, he says. He leads you out into the world to enjoy the creation he has given you, to be free to roam and to feed upon the hills and to drink from the springs, to feed on those good pastures, those mountains of Israel. His fold doesn't stay in its pen, but he opens the gate and leads you out into the whole wide world. But wait, you say, isn't that where the valley of the shadow of death is? Isn't that where there's enemies that seek to hurt and harm me? Isn't that where the wild things are, where the danger is? And won't the wolves come along and just snatch us away? Isn't it actually better to be locked up together in that little pen with all of its slop and mud and mire and dung. At least there, we're safe and secure. <laughs> Fenced in, protected. That, maybe that makes sense because you've been led astray so many times by false promises and groundless hopes and naive dreams of the bad shepherds. Maybe it is better to just stay in the pen, sit there, sort of live and eventually die. <laughs> Except that's not good. Yes, you fear the unknown, the whole wide world, and that's quite reasonable, but it's faithless. Again, fearing the unknown is reasonable, but it's faithless. You have a good shepherd Jesus who has more for you, only do not be afraid. He leads you out. His voice calls you to follow him as he leads you. What do you have to fear anyway? He died your death already. Your sins are forgiven now and always. Even the serpent's bite and his venom cannot harm you. He will be with you the whole way, leading you, guiding you, protecting you, defending you, preserving your life. <laughs> and of course, there are other sheep who are not yet of his fold. How else are those sheep to be brought into the fold if you are locked away in the pen? How attractive is that? Dirty, grimy sheep who are huddled in fear? No, Jesus leads you out into the world as his sheep, trusting in him, and others will see and will join. Like attracts like. Other sinners in need of Jesus' forgiveness coming along. And more than that, he'll guide his fold. He will guide you in ways and to places you can't even imagine. He'll lead you in a freedom that you've never even known. 
and he will feed you along the way with his life and abundantly, today and always. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen.